Welcome to your Church House. My name is Olga Zimons. I'm the current chair of the Department of Germanic Languages. And it's my great pleasure and honor to welcome a very special guest today uh, from Sweden, Sweden's Minister of Higher Education and Research, Helene Helmont Kutza, is here with an entire delegation, among them the Consul General of Sweden in New York, Leif Kronsky, and many others. We have a moderator of this event today, Sarah Super, who is a Swedish journalist and uh, Columbia alumni. She will be introducing all the other panelists in just a minute. Uh, I'll be very brief. Um, I just want to say that although this is Deutsches House, our department is not as German as it may sound. We are very happy to uh, have thriving programs in several languages. We have a thriving Yiddish program. A Dutch program, we have a Finnish program, and we are particularly proud of Lena Sternwald, who is a leading, uh, our leader of the Swedish program, and who's been extremely successful. So, <laughs> yes, we have. So, this event is really for you, the students here at Columbia who are taking these courses, students who may be considering to spend some time abroad, or should be considering to spend some time abroad. You will get a lot of information. You will have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, we have uh, Rita Schauweis here from the Global Office at Columbia. So there will be a lot for you to take in and take away, I hope. Which brings me to the last point. As you notice, this is a lunch panel. Um, I should mention that the Swedish consulate has not only organized this event, they also sponsor it. So please help yourself to some food. Uh, grab some sandwiches, but do so quickly, so uh, because time is short. But before you go, please uh, give a big thanks to uh, Melinda Martino, who's uh, organized this event together with Emma Lindgren and the uh, Swedish consulate. And please welcome our special guest from Sweden. We're very glad to have you here. Thank you. I'm 
wheel on them, and perhaps a cautionary tale of what can happen if you study abroad, because I've been going on 18 years in the US now. Uh, I'm originally from Sweden. Um, so yes, uh, I will ask some questions. Uh, some of them will be directly specific panelists, but other panelists, please feel free to chime in. Um, even at questions that you know, are directed to that person. So the first question uh, is uh, for the minister. Um, the Swedish government is currently working to make higher education in Sweden more international. Um, what does that look like in practice for Americans, for American students looking to study in Sweden? Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to be here with you all today. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to this uh, afternoon and uh, I have to say this is my first time here at Columbia University so I'm very pleased to be here. It's my fifth uh, time in the United States I think uh, as a minister and uh, you can wonder why is it so important for a Swedish minister to go to the United States and of course it's because you are a very prominent country especially when it comes to research so uh, I think it's uh, why you have that many Nobel laureates and um, this year is no exception. You have <laughs> new Nobel laureates and uh, yesterday in Boston I had uh, the opportunity to meet with one of them the, uh, laureates. But also it's because we want to like to promote uh, more uh, student exchange because like you all know, we live in a time when uh, more and more gets very internationalized and globalized and it's not only the relationship between people, it's also the uh, companies uh, that are getting more global and to, in order to stay competitive we have to have international uh, knowledge. But it's also for our uh, development as individuals. We to be more internationalized to, in order to uh, get, gain more knowledge about other cultures uh, and other ways of finding solutions to, to this grand challenges that we are all facing. Uh, from Sweden we have identified uh, for our uh, research uh, uh, priorities for the coming four years that climate change, digitalization, health and uh, life sciences are such as global uh, challenges and we need to go both across borders but also across disciplinary and across sectors to find the solution of these grand challenges and we think that internationalization of higher education is also a question of quality of education because when we are in an environment and meet with students from different countries and different cultures you will also learn more experience more and it will increase the quality of higher education. So what we have been doing, we have appointed a commission of inquiry to uh, see how we can uh, increase the internationalization of the higher education in Sweden and also attract more students coming to Sweden and uh, also see that more Swedish students go abroad for some time in their education. Today only 40% of Swedish students go abroad during their education and that is lower than the common goals we have for the European Union that we think uh, at least 20% of the students should go abroad for some time uh, during their uh, education. Uh, but I think that we have a lot of uh, US students in Sweden today. We have like a thousand uh, US students. And there are many things that is uh, good for Americans to come to Sweden. I think one of the things is the, the Swedish society is really open and also uh, it's a very uh, secure environment and we have top quality higher education institutions with very good uh, education. Uh, we have three universities at the time's higher education ranking as the top 100. We have 11 universities in the top 400. So we have really strong higher education institutions. 
but also Swedish is one of the countries that has uh, our, the population are uh, speaking English uh, in a very broad sense. So this is also, so it's very easy for English speaking people to come to Sweden and be a part of the society because almost everyone speaks English. Um, so one problem is that you will have a hard time learning Swedish. <laughs> so, uh, and that I think we have some experience on here. Uh, but, uh, but also a lot of the programs and courses that we offer us in the higher education are in English. In the master level, almost 50% of the programs are in English and PhD level, every uh, program of course is in English. Uh, the challenge we have is that we also have to see that how to get more uh, on an undergrad level uh, in the English both courses and programs, but also see if we can offer more shorter terms of exchange. Uh, so this is what we are um, uh, hoping, uh, investigating that we have been committed, will come up with more uh, suggestions and strategies how to increase and make it more flexible to, to come to Sweden and also how our universities and university college can work in uh, uh, finding funding but also have strategic partnership with different colleges and universities so they can offer good conditions for the students coming to Sweden. And lastly, I would like to say that also we have heard in discussion with students here in the, in the United States, but also with universities, that the possibility to have internships within companies or NGOs or uh, in uh, perhaps also um, different governmental uh, authorities or ministries could be something that would be very interesting students to combine internships with uh, studies in Sweden. Uh, so this is what we hope uh, to have a strategy next year uh, from the investigator to see who we can further increase and uh, make it even more attractive to come to Sweden. Thank you. And uh, I think the question on a lot of people's minds here is probably what, what's in it for you? Um, what, what can American students expect to gain from their experience in Sweden? James, if you can address that. Sure. Yeah, so thanks also for the opportunity to be here today. And I should, I think, begin with one kind of caveat or disclaimer that I'm half Swedish. So, although I've lived most of my life in the U.S., that before I was there, I never lived in Sweden other than a few months in the summers. Um, I guess I kind of have a little bit of an insider's perspective before going there. And um, so the question is what can Americans do? Expect to gain. Or well, what do you feel you gain? Yeah. I think, um, so one of the biggest things that I feel like I gained was, you know, this a bit of a cliche, but that sort of international perspective. And I feel like in, uh, sort of for undergrad I went to, uh, to Penn. And I'm sure in some ways in Columbia, it's, it's a very international school and you meet people from, from all over. I have a lot of opportunities for great experiences here and, and elsewhere too. But I think that difference of sort of instead of just going overseas for for a change semester or for a summer, for example, but actually moving there for a year or two, uh, spending spending time in that country, um, and or or even for a, a longer exchange semester, I think really um, sort of expanded my perspective in ways more and more than I would have, would have expected um, going into it. And I, I think. Um, Oh, well, I spent a good bit of time traveling, sort of growing up with my, with my parents, and, and also after the graduate um, years. But, but I think just that that perspective of living in a, in a very different um, culture just uh, I, I think gave me gave me a lot. And I think I think Sweden's uh, for for some of the reasons that Leah mentioned too. It's a it's a many ways a very good place to have that experience. And also to the minister, uh, what, what what is your hope that an American would gain from from coming to Sweden? But as, uh, like I said, unfortunately, you uh, you will not learn Swedish <laughs> because 
every week with Italian to English, the first time that we meet you. And uh, of course, now you have already experienced the most important thing we have in Sweden is Fika. Uh, it's our <laughs> coffee breaks, <laughs> so that you can do here in New York, you don't have to go to Sweden for that. But I think that uh, not only to uh, have this experience within the university, but if you have a possibility to also be a part of the Swedish society, you could learn something and learn another way to find uh, solutions uh, on uh, some of our types uh, big challenges. Uh, Sweden, for instance, is a very gender equal country, and uh, we are not. We are the best in the world, but we are not uh, good enough. I think we have to do more. But it's also interesting, to, I think, to see a country where we must participate uh, in the labor market is 78 percent. It's equal to men uh, because we have organized uh, the. Parenthood, so you can all combine career with parenting and uh, having a family with uh, tax funded uh, preschool or child care and uh, also with a very generous uh, parent insurance uh, during the first year with the children and that is also divided between the uh, father and mother. So I think this is also what you can gain. You can see that there are different ways to find solutions for creating a society that could combine both equality and prosperity and uh, growth, economic growth. And also, if you are interested in working in a company, that's why I mentioned this an internship. Uh, Sweden is um, the second most innovative country in the world, and we have the highest uh, amount of headquarters for global companies uh, in, uh, uh, to our population. I mean, we are only 10 million, but we have companies like Ericsson and uh, ABB, Volvo, Scania, and all of them are still having their headquarters in Sweden. So working with this very global company could be also a very great experience, I think. But we also have a very vibrant uh, startup scene and companies like, I think you know Spotify, for instance, is one of the, the startups from Sweden that is not moving into uh, office here in New York. <laughs> so, but, so this, I think, also could be a part of the experience both to see how you can uh, sort of organize the society, but also how you can take be a part of the corporate side of Sweden. That is truly global, I would say. I just have to say, Sweden has been a very open country since World War II, and we have been a part of a very open economy, but also tried to stay a very open society. So during this refugee crisis we had the last years, we are took responsible for 163,000 refugees from Syria and Iraq and Iran only during 2015. So, but we see that Sweden has gained from being very open because that has made us uh, to be one of Europe's poorest country to one of Europe's richest country. So I think also to see how you can stay open and gain from it, uh, it's uh, also experience that could, uh, I hope, inspire for the future. I think we need more openness in the future. And uh, a question for uh, Dean Sharma. If a student comes to you and tells you they want to study abroad, or specifically in Sweden in this case, uh, what would be the first step that you would advise them to take? Or so thank you for having me as well. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and to talk about something that is very close to my heart. Um, the whole idea of global experiences and transformation experiences. I'm a, a British person um, on the cusp of citizenship, so fingers crossed everyone. Um, and myself did a French exchange program when I was a high school student. So would just encourage anyone who is, who is studying a language to have an immersive experience because there is nothing um, 
There's nothing else like being in a different country to taste it, to feel it, to smell it, to touch it. Um, so that's my that's my very shameless plug. This is also close to my heart because I wear two hats at the university. I'm currently running the Office of Global Programs and Fellowships, but also run the Centre for Career Education, where over the past 10 years, we've developed international internship programs where students are actually able to do an international internship for eight weeks uh, over the summer. So I just want to, to acknowledge that there are many ways that students can um, gain global immersion, um, and, and, and it's really important to, to think about all of those. But if you were to arrive at the Office of Global Programs um, and have an interest in studying abroad in Sweden, the first thing that we would want to do is get you connected to the right advisor. Um, so we have advisors who um, advise around programs depending on the region of the world. Um, and the whole advising process and how you work with an advisor, I think is absolutely critical to making sure that you are really well prepared for your study. Experience. So that would be our first step, and then thereafter it would be working with you to explore different options. Um, there is, I think we have a student in the audience today who's going to be doing the, the DIS program in Stockholm. Um, uh, so that's a program that is um, relatively new, certainly to Columbia students. Um, DIS are an organization who administer programs through the University of Minnesota. Uh, they've long had a presence in Copenhagen and now have a presence in Stockholm. So um, through that program, uh, we are able to provide students with an opportunity to study in Sweden um, and to study language, culture, history, politics of the Scandinavian um, region. Uh, so that would be something that we would kind of reference the student to if you wanted. And, and one of the things that's great about that program is that it does include a homestay. So hearing about um, the Swedes' desire to speak in English, I think that if you do, if you have a homestay experience and you're staying with a Swedish family, um, if you really are looking to um, up your level of language and really understand, I think, what it means to, to live and to work and to be raised in Sweden and, and what the culture is and why it's so different. And, you know, Swedish people are able to, to quote these great statistics around gender equality. You know, where does that all come from? And I really think if you have a homestay experience, you learn so much more about um, a country than being purely in, in a classroom. Um, so that's one thing we would talk through. And then for any students that we would have who are very serious language learners, um, we would be happy to explore um, other options where they might want to direct enroll in a Swedish university um, and, um, as I say, really work on, on um, Swedish language skills and fluency. Um, and that would be a slightly separate process, but again, something that you would work through with your advisor. So any students who are thinking about Sweden or other areas, my primary piece of advice is you really need to come into the office and get connected and really start to think about it as early as possible because the best, um, the best prepared students are the ones who really had some time to think about the complexities of what it means to be somewhere else. Thank you. And James, what would your uh, advice be to a student? Uh, where, did, where did you start uh, your research? Or what was the process like for you? So I, I think I knew I wanted to uh, study economics, yeah. and and you sort of it's narrowed down all this. And for me, yeah, it was focused on Sweden for for several reasons. And um, and then I knew also I also I've been in the city, so Stockholm was kind of a natural natural choice there. And then uh, so Stockholm School of Economics ended up being the school I went to. I know there are many sort of, it's a pretty small school. There are many bigger schools like Stockholm University that um, it's. It's a huge school with a good reputation. I think, of course, depending on what your uh, what your field is or what you're interested in. I think, for example, Stockholm University is sort of has a very good reputation for development economics. Stockholm School of Economics is a bit more of the uh, the business school. And um, one thing to uh, to add on to the, a couple of the points you were making earlier on the uh, sort of just what you could get out of the um, experience too, especially on the points of uh, collab sort of. The culture of collaboration and uh, gender, uh, sort of gender equality, and that kind of progressive spirit. I think uh, so. While I was applying too, I, I don't know how 
sort of, I know you didn't know too much about FinTech, but I had a pretty half-baked idea for an insurance company. And so while I was sort of communicating with the school I was applying to, I uh, some of them have uh, different business labs. And I, I think one of the reasons Sweden is at the number two in the world for its kind of success with startups is just that sort of cultural collaboration, but also the investment over time, and whether it's the broadband infrastructure, and, and even other things like, like not having to worry right after graduation about your sort of healthcare expenses, and just a lot of the sort of s social investments in, uh, in the people. And uh, so then uh, we, we had this, this idea for an insurance company or a business plan. There is a huge network in, uh, in Stockholm to sort of support these, these early stage businesses. And we got sort of, the idea was terrible, so it didn't end, end up going anywhere. But we got great access to sort of these top entrepreneurs who, you, you kind of saw how this system works. And if, if this was an idea that was going to go somewhere, this is, this is where you want, want to be. And, uh, and then also on the, uh, especially on the, the gender equality and the kind of progressiveness, I've, uh, so I, before moving to Sweden, I worked for First Young, and I'm back here now, but I worked part time at the EY office in, uh, in Stockholm. And although EY here as well does sort of try to, to move towards gender equality, they were, they were much more explicit about it there. So we, we'd have kind of team meetings, and they say, sort of, for these, Groups for these teams that we want 50% men and 50% women at these different ranks, and um, so in addition to the the time you get off, if, sort of if you have a kid, sort of more of the expectation that that burden should be shared sort of equally between the the between the parents. I think um, there, yeah, there is there, there's just sort of a much more kind of explicit attempt to to move in the in the right direction. I think in, in Sweden. And uh, we're actually running out of time, but one last question. I've, you've mentioned that you know it's hard to learn English. I'm oh, sorry, it's hard to learn Swedish in Sweden if you're an English speaker because everybody loves to practice their English. Um, but in terms of Swedish, how much Swedish do you need to know? Um, is speaking Swedish a prerequisite to studying at a Swedish university? Uh, I guess this is really for James and the minister to both take a step at that question. <laughs> I, I have to start with the quick. So I, I would say it's definitely not a, not a prerequisite. And I would actually get frustrated sometimes. You'd be like, you know, you go to a restaurant, you try to order in Swedish. And I understand Swedish, but I have a very, very noticeable American accent when I speak it. And every, almost every time people would sort of switch to English and I stick with Swedish and then, <laughs> and then go back to English. So um, it's, yeah, I mean, I would say definitely not a, not a prerequisite. And, and a lot of students, I think you mentioned a thousand, there's a thousand Americans. There are people, sort of students coming from all over, especially like countries in Europe. So um, I think it's, it's good to have, and, and then if, if you to get more into the society, if you're going to be there a bit longer, sort of understand not just FICA, but sort of what a crayfish party is, or the different banquets they'll they'll put on. Then I think sort of the drinking songs and everything you want to understand too much for that. But it's definitely not about that. No, but that's true. You don't need to speak Swedish uh, to take courses. Of course, it's different if you are going to be a physician or a medical doctor or a teacher. Of course, you have to, or a nurse. And of course, you have to learn Swedish if you want to practice in Sweden. Uh, but I think you have a good point there. If you want really to understand the culture, the language is the key to the culture and I think you all know that so of course learning Swedish uh, I mean you don't have to be on an academic level but learning Swedish uh, uh, to a certain point will be a very good way to, if you really want to understand the society and therefore so I would really say that if you want to learn Swedish a good thing, <laughs> but we'll have a hard time to practice it. <laughs> and uh, one last question for Dean Sharma, uh, a very sort of logistical question. Can Columbia students use their points from coursework abroad towards their Columbia degree? How does that work? Yes, they can. Um, for most, unless the, if the program is a Columbia program that's taught by a Columbia faculty member, then you will receive Columbia credit towards your degree. If it is not taught by Columbia faculty and not Columbia course, 
then there's a process that we can work on with you to get those credits transferred um, so that they do appear on your transcript. Um, and if you're interested in those credits counting towards a major, then we, you work directly with the department um, to make sure that um, the, the credits will transfer appropriately into the major. So it's a, a process that we can work, work through with the help of an advisor. But yes, is the, the quick answer. Thank you. And uh, thanks again to the panelists. Uh, I think you probably remain seated since there will be a QA. and a uh, But before that, I will hand over uh, to Anna, uh, who has a presentation for you. Thank you, Sara and Emma. Are we, are we all set? Great. Here's one. this brief presentation. Uh, my goal over the next, let's say, eight to ten minutes uh, will be to introduce you to what it's like to study and live in Sweden. Um, as you see on the map, Sweden is a fairly large country, you see, it's, uh, with the yellow as well. At least in terms of its geographical size, it's actually the fifth largest country in the world. Sweden is very sparsely populated. The country has, as of this year, 10 million inhabitants. The combination of few people and a big geographical area means, yeah, you got it, a lot of space in Sweden. And uh, as the minister Ian James pointed out, um, you can easily get by uh, in Sweden without knowing any Swedish. Uh, but well, because most Swedes actually are fluent in English. Uh, the minister um, should pop up some. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> Powerful figures, right? So maybe you've heard of uh, some of these companies. The minister mentioned Spotify and Ericsson, I think was also mentioned. IKEA, Volvo, H&M, Skype, Skanska. We all know these global uh, corporations here in, in the United States. Nearly all of the companies are world leaders in their industry. Given a population of only 10 million inhabitants, Sweden is the country with the largest number of multinational corporations per capita. There is also a huge amount of innovation in Sweden. And Stockholm, as the minister pointed out, is the startup capital of Europe and only behind Silicon Valley on a global level. In terms of higher education, Sweden has excellent universities and has the second highest number of uh, the top-ranked universities in the world. So Sweden has excellent universities, more multinational corporations per capita than any other country in the world, a world leader in tech startups, and is a very innovative country. What's the secret? <laughs> the key is that the Swedish higher education system is excellent at teaching students to think creatively and come up with their own ideas. So how does one inspire students to be creative? One way to describe it is with the three words that you see over there. Informality, a relaxed atmosphere, Independence, yes, but also responsibility, influence, students' voices are heard. You are on a first name basis with your lecturer professor. You can feel free to question what a lecturer professor says. The informality is a reflection of Swedish society as a whole. The informality helps to generate an atmosphere in which creativity and new ideas can arise. 
In Sweden, you are expected to think independently. You learn to think critically, analytically, and to be responsible and plan your own work. While independent thinking is a key aspect of Swedish higher education, group work is equally as common and important. Student influence is an important and distinct feature of Swedish higher education. You can give input on your lectures, impact how things are taught, which empowers students. Consensus-based decisions are also the norm in Swedish society of today. Many people think of Sweden as a homogeneous country, but 20% of the population is foreign-born or has one or two or one or both parents born abroad. We have many international students. What do international students tend to like about Sweden? Uh, some of the things they mention are equality. Sweden, as the minister mentioned, is one of the world leaders in equality between the sexes. For example, generally half of the members of parliament and of the government are women. Environment. Sweden is a very clean country. Students like the clean air, water and cities. We put an emphasis on sustainability and 99% of waste is recycled, safe. Sweden is one of the safest countries in the world. Organized. Sweden is very organized. Things run on time. My students know that. Cold. Well. <laughs> Sweden is actually as cold as you might think. Uh, it can certainly get cold, especially in the north. Uh, but it's much milder than many people think. The average winter temperature in Sweden is approximately, I've been told, plus one degree Celsius, which is approximately 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Sweden offers over 1,000 programs in English, including degree programs at the bachelor and master level. The vast majority of programs, around 900, are offered at the master level. There are both one and two year programs. You can find nearly any subject area in English in Sweden. The only programs that we do not offer in English are dentistry, medicine, veterinary science, and MBAs, though we do offer many master programs in business and teaching. Some of the most popular subjects are sustainability, business, design, life sciences, biotechnology, engineering, human rights, international relations, etc., etc., etc. Welcome to search our national program database, studyinsweden.se. It's very easy to apply to Swedish universities. Uh, you apply online once and can apply to a number of Swedish universities. The fee today is around 100 US dollars, and I just checked yesterday, uh, 900 Swedish core. Universityadmissions.se is the official website for international students who wish to apply for studies in Sweden. Uh, I do believe for 2018 it is January 15. January 15 for 2018. Tuition fees. Well, that is an important issue, right? Uh, tuition fees in Sweden vary between 9,000 US dollars and 17,000 approximately US dollars per year for non-European Union EA citizens. But please note, if you are in a lucky position and uh, you might be interested in knowing that the EU EA citizens, for, for them there is no tuition fee. 
Scholarships, another important issue. Scholarships are offered by individual universities. Uh, also, the Swedish Institute offers study scholarships. Study scholarships are for master students only. The study scholarships cover living expenses and tuition fees. Uh, there's a two-year work experience requirement, but volunteer experience can also count. Cost of living. Um, it's not cheap to live in Sweden. But on the plus side, many day-to-day -day expenses are not, not bad. There are less expensive options for students like, um, if you like, IKEA and H&M. Eating out could, however, be expensive. And James, I'm sure you can share your experience, your experience in this field. Um, working in Sweden, uh, you might like to know that um, in Sweden you can work during your studies. Uh, it's important, however, to keep in mind that master programs in Sweden are demanding and you should not expect to be able to have a full-time job during your studies. All international students can also stay for six months after having completed the studies to look for, work, for work. It's not easy to get a job in Sweden like in most other countries in the world, but if you do find a job, it is a great place to work. So, what is your next step? Feel free to speak with us. Visit the homepage studyinsweden.se and do pick up the information material that we have in the adjacent room. Uh, we have picked up this information material for you. I would recommend, we spoke earlier about learning Swedish and uh, the importance of that. I would recommend trying to learn at least some Swedish if you're interested in studying in Sweden, even if you don't need it to navigate. Most universities in Sweden offer Swedish courses for international students. Um, you're also welcome to check uh, the website studyinsweden.se again uh, to find more information about online courses in Swedish. But why not start learning Swedish here at Columbia, right? Uh, Columbia offers both elementary and intermediate courses and uh, welcome to join us. Uh, we're meeting twice a week here at Archie's house and we work together. We are having a good time and uh, let's get started. Come and join us. Thank you.
behind free education in, in Sweden. Uh, like the principle um, behind, like in Sweden, you can have free education, which is a really, really big, a really big opportunity to anyone. Um, so I'm from France, so I'm also a EU citizen. And I just wanted to have your point of view about the importance of free education uh, in our education. Well, that is a question of the equality and equal opportunities. So uh, we think that it's really important that it doesn't matter if your parents is uh, educated in higher education or where you live in Sweden, like we are. The, Sweden is a really big country and, uh, and uh, you should be able to go to higher education even though you live in up north or in the rural areas. And also it shouldn't depend on which kind of uh, economy your parents has. So this is also a very important thing for Sweden because like you heard we are very few <laughs> but we are doing quite good <laughs> and I think the philosophy or the policy behind that is if you take give everyone a chance uh, you will have a lot of people uh, that is uh, prepared to do good things for both society for competitiveness in our corporations. Uh, so I think uh, this is, uh, but it's also about uh, uh, equality. Uh, so everyone should get a chance. So this has been the policy for Sweden uh, for a long, long time. And we will not change it, but we change it for uh, non-EU uh, citizens uh, during the former government. That has uh, resulted in that we had a decrease of international students in the Swedish universities. Now we are trying to find new ways to attract, uh, even though we have tuition fees for for uh, non EU students. Tack så mycket, Brother Trevny. Uh, jag heter Travis och jag bodde i Sverige för tio månader när jag var 17 och tog jag en längre nu. Jag har frågat det i engelska. Det är en fråga för Dean Sharma. På Columbia är det en officiell förutsättning att man ska be studying a language before they embark on a global program, for instance in Sweden? You can go there without speaking Swedish, but does Colombia require you to study? So I think one of the best things about um, the variety of programs that are available to students is that it really depends program to program. So uh, some programs have language prerequisites because they are about direct, uh, they are about immersion or direct enrollment in a foreign um, university where the language of instruction would be um, would not be English, um, and others are actually quite experiential programs that we offer to students as well, which are grounded in the academic curriculum, but nonetheless don't require um, language. Any other questions from the audience?
Um, Back here. Hi, everyone. More. Um, Simon from the Language Resource Center. Um, thank you for the good presentation. Very stimulating, very eye-opening in many ways. Um, you're emphasizing the um, importance of being familiar with the language that opens up various avenues that are cultural, professional, um, social. And uh, this question is perhaps more to James than uh, the rest of the panel in that um, can you think of a specific example uh, where knowing Swedish, uh, not you know, necessarily even actively but passively, um, allow you to uh, do things or um, experience uh, things in Sweden uh, that would otherwise not be possible if you only knew English? Yeah, definitely. So a couple of things come to mind. One actually that uh, one of my friends who I met, a Swedish guy who worked here for briefly but from Uppsala University, um, it's actually there when, when we were over there. They, he was invited to a crayfish party in Uppsala, so I went with him. And um, so, it, I mean, that's the kind of thing I think just to sort of inexperience any culture in general, if you're able to, to know the language, sort of you, you go to this, whether it's a, a party at somebody's house or a certain event, and everybody can sort of, even if I'm not able to express myself as much as I want to in Swedish, to be able to kind of be in that environment. I think, you know, you take a, or I, I, I really sort of enjoy that, I think knowing Swedish when, when necessary. And, um, and also on a, sort of on the professional side, in both uh, sort of like work lunches, people are of course much, I mean, everybody's very polite in Sweden. If, if you only speak English, you don't speak English, and that's totally fine. But I think being able to to go out just to a casual work lunch with everybody speaking Swedish, it's, it's sort of, it adds something. And, and also if you, do you want to pursue a job or a career in Sweden, then at some point knowing knowing Swedish will will become help. I think it'll give you a better better shot at getting a job, even though it's not required. Um, but ultimately when you're if you need to sort of get to know your clients or a, a certain industry, at some point you'll you'll want to know the language. Hi, um I just wanted to add on the language front. So I did um, a year of study abroad in Uppsala 12 years ago for undergrad, and um, I lived in a corridor with eight, a lot of other <laughs> city students. It was very only one exchange in the <laughs> corridor. So I made a rule that we could only speak Swedish in the corridor, and I think that really helped. And I think, oh, let me try. Uh, four, no, 12 or Sienna, I can fit under water. Yeah, I'm talking about the part of the Tanzanian that I can show you a half part of the Tanzanian. And I just wanted to add that it was the best year of my life, so that's why I'm here today. Sorry, my name is Karin Lamberg. I'm a professor at the City University of New York. I'm Swedish, and I live and work here. I just wanted to add something to your answer. Um, my observation would be that you would not have access to the media in Sweden if you do not speak or understand Swedish. And I think that would be very important to be able to read papers and follow the news and so on. They are, after all, in Swedish. <laughs> Whether you're doing an internship in another country or working with a professor from another country, 
um, which we have here as well, but I, I think there is sort of an additional almost expectation that you have to be kind of open to to these different, whether it's different cultures or different sort of avenues of, of doing things. And uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think we're No, I just want to say once again thank you for this opportunity and I really hope that some of you, some of you have already been to Sweden and uh, very happy that you will share, uh, share a very positive uh, experience with uh, some of your peers here and also with the students. So, uh, but uh, I really hope that many of you will take the opportunity and, and hear about what it's like but also perhaps for uh, coming to Sweden. So we're looking forward to more exchange between both uh, Sweden and the United States. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much to everybody in the audience uh, who, who came here today. Uh, I would like to invite you to help yourself to more food, coffee, Spanish, Finca, um, and Information materials, where exactly? Okay, uh, outside, um, there are information materials if you would like to learn more about study in Sweden. And uh, yeah, have some mingle, speak to each other, speak to panelists. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, thank you for being here.